So hello and welcome to season two of the Mundane to Magical Online Summit series. My name is Louise Matson, and I'm truly blessed to be your host. I hope you're all enjoying the summit so far as we come to the final week of interviews and I hope that you've enjoyed the introduction of these live interviews as much as I have. And remember it really doesn't matter whether you are interacting live on the calls or watching them on the replay. Each transmission is light encoded to ensure that you receive the perfect energetic download at the perfect time for you. As always, my intention with each session is to provide the perfect speakers and the perfect messages to help you to shift to your next highest level of soul evolution. And today I feel truly blessed and honored to welcome a very special guest speaker to the series, the beautiful soul that is Sandra Walter. And the topic for today's discussion is activating your crystalline DNA. But before we get into the discussion, let me just introduce Sandra to those of you who may not have come across her work before. Sandra is an amazing leader and way shower in the process of ascension with over 20 years experience of blazing the trail for us all to follow. Sandra is a way shower, ascension guide and gatekeeper in service to the shift in consciousness on Gaia. And as an interdimensional liaison since 1999, Sandra assists awakening humans through writings, videos, and creations focused on ascension. She inspires the exploration and evolution of human consciousness, bridging the multidimensional worlds to create peace, self-realization, and a deep understanding of the ascension process. And as a master gatekeeper, Sandra receives regular updates from a diverse benevolent collective of higher dimensional beings in service to the ascension. This includes gateway passages for energetic shifts, strong influxes of light, soul activity, timeline divisions, and related cosmic events. And I highly recommend you signing up for Sandra's newsletter if you haven't already done so, because it is packed with up-to-date information on all the cosmic events taking place and how we can align with them to raise our consciousness and assist in the planetary reawakening ascension process. As I said, Sandra has been in service for 20 years as a conduit to this level of light, intelligence and ascension guidance and shares information as a pure conduit to empower, inspire and accelerate the ascension of humanity. She's a published author, certified life coach, artist and energy healer. And it's my absolute honor to welcome you to the show, Sandra. Oh, blessing, sister. It's such an honor to be here. and Welcome, everyone. And thank you for your patience <laughs> this morning as we shift our timelines a little bit. <laughs> Absolutely. And thank you to everybody who set the intention that the Internet Angels were going to do their thing because it worked. <laughs> it worked. It worked. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Oh, it's lovely to connect with you. Oh, no, it's it's such a joy to connect with you. I mean, I've followed your work for about four years now um and and your work and and your writings have just assisted me so much on my journey just to to know that I wasn't going mad that <laughs> everything that I was getting was you know normal to some out there even though I couldn't kind of speak openly about it at the time and yeah so it was it's a it's a real honor to have you on the show so I thank you from the bottom of my heart <laughs> Oh, you're so welcome, sister. It's such an honor. Yeah, and that's really all way showing is about is just sharing the experience and what you're receiving and your own journey. You know, a lot of what way showing is about is just sharing mm -hmm. uh, so that other people don't feel crazy <laughs> during this intense time. And it's getting more intense. So the more of us that are out there sharing what we're receiving or what we're experiencing, the better. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and through your work and through your, your courses, it's actually enabled me to step out and, and to do this work, to step fully into my service work and actually become a way shower for those following in, you know, uh, in the lines behind. So, uh, yeah, amazing, amazing. Um, but let's get on to the topic for today's conversation, because I know you could talk about a million and one different topics. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, but today's topic is all around crystalline DNA and I know that that's really you know at, at the top of your your list right now for for discussion points so I just yeah I, I'm opening the floor really for you to share your your knowledge and wisdom about crystalline DNA you know what it is and how we can actually start to activate it and 
and when we would know when, you know, what, what kind of changes or shifts we might actually uh, encounter to mm. highlight the fact that we are actually activating our crystalline DNA and making those changes. Right, right. It's, a, it's such a fun topic for me, and especially at the point where I'm at in my journey, because I'm experiencing embodiment. And embodiment is this beautiful merging of the, the higher self is just taking over the journey and you're actually embodying that frequency. And when we dug into how that is created, it was actually all happening through the DNA. Mm -hmm. And the more intel that I was receiving on DNA, the more the conversation just became this beautiful, expanded uh, thing. And I'm actually teaching a, a crystalline DNA class right now, so I'm receiving a lot more information. That happens every time I teach. But the it, it's really interesting because the, our DNA has all these multidimensional levels or layers or strands, whatever you want to call it, and it's actually creating, DNA is the way that we create this experience and form. Mm. So everything's happening through the DNA. And as the energies come onto the planet and the planetary consciousness, you know, Gaia's got her ascended realm already. So we're revealing the ascended realm as all this is happening. And our DNA starts turning on through the photonic light and through our own personal choice and intention, which is one of the first steps is to engage with that. But through all these different cosmic events and energies and our own intention and our higher self stepping into the form, we're actually using the DNA, our DNA, to create an experience of ascension. So this is how it's happening. This is like the how behind the whole mechanism of all these realities and all, you know, getting now that the veils are, are lifting and the self-imposed veils are lifting we're getting this revelation of, oh, this is what that means. This is what all the symbols were, you know, all the ancient stuff is starting to come into play. Like, oh, they were actually talking about DNA and DNA codes and sequences and layers. It was just like everything is coming together, which is it's just really fascinating part of our journey. And for, for me personally, now we're bringing in the scientists that – have avoided the 12 strand DNA or the 144 crystalline structure conversation because they're like, well, yeah, that's like off planet channels or whatever. And, and we've watched this through the years, like stuff that's been channeled from way back, just all of a sudden enters the scientific community. And then they're like, Oh, we've just discovered. We're like, yeah, we've been talking about it for decades, you know? So now that the energy has shifted, we've got this ascended platform, and science is starting to see a very strange behavior with kind of quantum effects of DNA in the lab. I'm, I'm making it part of my journey to actually bridge the conversations between the scientists that have seen the kind of unexplainable quantum behavior of DNA in the lab, and the intel that's been received from the higher realms and in the light worker community about 12 strand crystalline DNA. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to open up those conversations. We've got a couple that are happening with the, uh, with the DNA class itself that'll be released later um, on YouTube or whatever. But for now, we're just uh, uh, opening up the doors for us to exchange information. Mm -hmm. And it's not, our way is the right way, their way is the right way. We're actually coming together going, you know, if we put our hearts and our minds together, we could probably blow the doors off of this thing and actually accelerate the discoveries, you know, because we've received so much in the in the kind of in the channelings and and with just connecting with our higher selves. We've, we have received so much about DNA and what it means and how it fits into the whole universal model and the Taurus fields and how it connects to, I mean, this, this class, you know, is, is just expanding it into how time, time dynamics work right through the DNA, how your DNA is a record of everything you've ever been and ever will be, all the quantum possibilities when you get the 12 strand structure to, to reorganize itself and how that fits into the universal dynamic and what 
divine love is actually about and how you reconnect it and how it fits in with geometry and the codes coming in through the sun and the new aspects of water, like all this stuff is coming together, which makes it exciting. You know, I'm very excited to kind of pull all that together, but it's also uh, accelerating our progress as a collective for ascension which is my ultimate goal. So I'm like, well, if this really like accelerates everything and you start bridging the science and the technology and the, and the light workers and the gatekeeping community, it's another exciting conversation that's happening. Uh, we're gonna have Dr. Glenn Ryan here in, in Sedona next weekend to actually record um, this fascinating conversation that I had with him at Dimensions of Disclosure, we like sat down on a couch outside for two hours and worked out theories about how uh, crystalline uh, DNA at interacts with the grid systems of the planet and like how it's possible that gatekeepers, because we've been told all the time, gatekeepers and grid workers, you're using your DNA to interact with these ancient structures and crystalline templates and different things. And I, I was like, well, we're receiving that it's all happening through our starseed DNA. So what's the bridge, you know, and taking what, uh, you know, the vast amount of, of experience and, and in information that Dr. Ryan has on DNA uh, and, and applying it to this conversation, like we just opened up a whole lot of doors for how how to prove that that's happening besides just the coincidental synchronistic stuff that happens uh, when we're out on the land and working with these gateways. Mm -hmm. So it's just just a fascinating time for <laughs> for DNA and for kind of elevating that discussion and mm -hmm. and providing some validity or at least in theory of uh, how this is possible and what we can open up for for the scientists too and go just bring it into the conversation just see what happens when you play with this in in the lab and uh because ultimately it's all about healing healing the collective and and getting our our the natural technology that we have within us to operate at a higher level so that we can create healing and teach people how to heal themselves right through the natural technology that's within the body, you know, the body intelligence and the intelligence of our DNA, which is the interface for higher self and lower self. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, we have had some massive, massive shifts. And I know that um, my guides have been telling me that in the 2020s and beyond it's going to be another exponential shift and it just feels like it's all coming together you know we talk about um you know bringing everything into unity becoming whole you know uh, aligning the heart with the mind and, and in a way you're on a wider perspective not just within the the singular person bringing the heart and the mind of of the globe in terms of the science and the intuitive aspect together yes. to kind of enable those greater shifts and so it just all seems to be really beautifully coming together um for yeah. the for the whole global ascension process and the awakening journey for everybody mm -hmm, truly and it's beautiful to witness this part of that higher timeline when that happens mm -hmm. because like you said you know the 2020 energies have been here for a few months already you know they started in uh, May, June, you know, all of a sudden we hit that 2020 timeline and the energies and the gates started opening and it's everything started accelerating. So for, for those of you who are experiencing that kind of personal timeline um, thing that's happening where it's just there, everything's shifting, everything's shifting very quickly in order, you know, if you have your heart's intent to really engage with those higher frequencies of new earth in this now you know collapsing your experience of time so it is very present very in the now mm -hmm. it's you'll notice how it rearranges your journey in order to keep you on that highest trajectory and that's something you can call in every day mm -hmm. every day you know first thing in the morning higher self just show me 
you know, clear all of my personal timelines of any uncomplimentary things that I just don't need to pay attention to and plant me on that higher, highest trajectory for my ascension, for my experience. You know, because it does, it, it's a, you know, it's a, a, a domino effect. It just really speeds up, you know, and so, so much of our experience now is becoming more quantum that uh, if we can flow with it and stop resisting because the resistance causes the dis-ease and the disharmony. So it's, it's our own resistance to change that causes, you know, drama, trauma, um, emotional stuff. You know, you really got to be in the now, in the flow, making the highest choices for your journey each moment. And it's so momentary. It's so in the now. And it shifts consistently, you know, but when we pay attention to what, uh, what we're creating through our DNA and through our ascension process and allowing the embodiment to take over, it's kind of hands off the wheel for a lot of this stuff. Just kind of let the higher self take over the journey, which is scary because people don't know what it looks like. <laughs> but the more you allow the higher self to take over, the more you see the more timelines you see, the more information you get, the more frequencies and codes you receive to, to allow that to become your natural state of flow, your natural state of beingness. Absolutely. And, and I can attest to that. I mean, it was kind of like the May, June period that I, I went into physically an exhaustion period and it was just surrendering to it and completely allowing you know, I knew Spirit had said that this summit was to be, be airing in September. And there was that aspect of me that was like, then I've got to get on and do stuff about it. But then it was just like, no, just just sit with this, just be, just do what you need to be doing in each now moment. And then beautifully, it just was like a light switch just came on and then whew, the power was just there. It was just like a completely different. I was in a completely different place to where I'd been. Um, so mm -hmm. from my own personal perspective, that's, that's how I kind of see those timeline shifts. But in terms of relating that to um, activating of the crystalline DNA, is it, is it that simple that, you know, we, we just become in alignment with our truth and, and have the intent, set the intent to, to um, get onto that highest timeline? that's possible for us in that now moment to to constantly be working in alignment with our higher self and and for the greatest good of all with harm to none it's is it just a case of kind of setting those intents or are there other things that we we need to be doing actively to activate the crystalline dna it really depends on the kind of experience you want to have it's just like it mirrors the ascension process so directly it's what would you like to experience in this now? What would you like to experience with this? Sorry, I'm going to plug in this little light. <laughs> it begins with that choice. So much like the ascension process. Pardon me. <laughs> details, details. So much like the ascension process, it begins with that choice. And then it's like, okay, how how much can I surrender to this incarnation, to this process, understanding that this is the window, mm. this is the lifetime to do it in, right? So you make a choice and it's just like any other thing. Like if I want to experience multidimensional existence right through my DNA, if I truly want to want to activate these additional strands and these other layers it's a very quantum thing if i want to go into this i i realize it's going to scramble everything that i have going on do i want to go into that experience is this going to be the incarnation where i really knock it out of the park and i just go you know what i'm i'm a sovereign being and i want to experience the highest level of freedom and the strangeness of ascension and going light body and all, all of the wild things that come with ascension, like art, you really have to make that decision mm -hmm. because a lot of people jump into ascension, but they never actually made the choice. And then they start wavering. And if, 
it's not a platform built on love. The whole thing crumbles at some point so that you come back to your own heart and go, is this something I really want to do? Do I want to live a life of service to this higher thing? Because ultimately, ascension is an act of service. Crystalline DNA activation is a level of service to the whole because it becomes a collective thing. You start reunifying with all of your higher levels, which are connected to a whole bunch of higher levels of other people. You know, the oversoul is responsible for 300,000 to 500,000 incarnations uh, on this planet. So you're, it's not you, it's your, uh, when you get to the oversoul level, you're creating entire fields of awakened, ascending consciousness that that is what's shifting. That's what shifted Gaia all those years ago, back in 1987, when the harmonic convergence, you get a whole, a couple of oversoul groups going, yes, I will assist. And you tell the planet, yes, we want this. And she ends up going into a full-blown ascension cycle and then completely ascending on the 12, 12, 12. So she's got that platform and it's just whether or not you want your personal experience to reflect what's going on in that higher realm and then all the weirdness and transformation that comes with that, because it is, it's a real heart-based decision. And then you align everything with that decision. And when it comes to DNA, just like the ascension process, you go through all the stages of healing, complete detoxification of the body, the mind, the emotions, the spirit, everything that's happening in the physical in order to support that. And it gets more and more refined as you go. You know, you start with the basics of detoxification and then you get, it gets more and more refined because there's little gateways, you know, there's little doorways to filters on higher and higher levels of consciousness. And if you want to experience that, you know, you might get a glimpse, but then, woof, you know, everything collapses, you go through a healing crisis, you might have to step back. It's always there. You know, it's quantum, it's always there. It's just you aligning with higher and higher choices in order to have that experience. Mm -hmm. So like everything with the DNA process, it's okay. Uh, you're told up front what this experience is going to be like. Look, everything is going to collapse that doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to put on the new pair of shoes, you know, every, everything else is going to go away. You know, all your old shoes are going to go away. And it's, it's just a matter of like, okay, if I want to step into that, uh, I, I, am, I, am I ready? Mm -hmm. You know, and when the stuff that's crumbling presents, how am I going to deal with it? Is there going to be resistance mm -hmm. or am I going to go fully into the flow and go, wow, I really need to take a look at judgment and my intentions and my service work and my lifestyle and the way that I talk to myself and the way that I talk to others. And there's all these different things that present for emotional clearing, for mental clearing, for rewiring the thought pattern so that it works in harmony with the brain. You know, the first step in, in DNA activation is healing, you know, so clearing out all of that stuff. And that's parallel to the ascension process too, because you can't embody the higher self until the lower self gets all the crap out of the way. And then the second phase is going into heart coherence because literally the ascension process as well as DNA activation, you can get any kind of DNA activation you want, but it will not stick. It's been proven in the lab. DNA does not hold those higher frequencies unless the bio landscape and the heart mm. are, uh, have the container for that. So if you don't have heart coherence, it doesn't work. You know, they've already proved that through all the stuff that they're doing over at the Heart Math Institute and in the lab. And, and Dr. Ryan was responsible for a lot of the stuff that they discovered at Heart Math. Like, wow, if you have heart coherence uh, in, around a, a field of DNA, the DNA responds mm -hmm. and can hold higher frequencies. Incoherent, it, it, you know, the, the DNA goes accepts an activation and they're they're measuring frequency so the mm. frequency goes up but it can't hold it yeah. it's not sustainable mm. so that right there you know you're two they're looking at the two strand but the two strand is the is the 
space for all the other stuff that's going on in the physical. So if you can't hold it in the physical, you're not going to have that experience. It kind of doesn't matter what's happening at layer nine or whatever, you know, and your ninth dimensional levels having a completely different experience. But if you want to experience it in the physical, a lot of stuff has to change, you mm. know, so that heart coherence, which is not about staying calm and relaxed it's the way it's the variability the way you respond to situations to stress to emotional triggers to the outside world to everything that's going on if you can maintain that frequency of coherence which is non-judgment unconditional love the ability to process things in a loving calm clear manner that's coherence mm. you know it's like a crystal it's like our vogels yeah. You know, they hold coherent light. You know, Vogel is a great, look at her, how pretty she is. But she, um, I use this as a demonstration in the class too. You know, if you shine a laser light through a, a regular crystal, you see the distortions, you know, and the light doesn't go through in a coherent way. Mm -hmm. You shine a, a laser light through a, uh, a Vogel, which is cut to increase coherence, the beam comes straight out the top, you know, it's like beautiful. And that's exactly what we're doing with our hearts. We're becoming a generator of coherent light frequency mm -hmm. so that we become a reflection of the divine, of source. You know, source is the ultimate coherent light frequency. You know, purity and divinity, we're doing the same thing with our heart centers. And the most beautiful thing about DNA activation in the ascension embodiment process is you start to feel it. You start to reap the rewards by feeling that consistency in your field. You feel your heart center getting really huge. You see it self-correcting your own life as well as things around you. You know, it's that's the, the Christed state as you start to see the harmony and the reflection of all the different realities around you starting to get affected and your own. You know, most importantly, your own. You start feeling your heart and the realities in a different way because the DNA that's responsible for creating those realities, you know, the higher self shining through the DNA is now able to purify the reflection, purify the experience, and you start seeing things from a completely different perspective. Mm -hmm. And then you have to deal with okay, now I'm seeing, just like the awakening process or the ascension process, you're seeing the realities from a completely different perspective. And the lower reality starts to go away. We talk about division of timelines. That's what it's all based on, is these bandwidths of frequency. And you see the lower timelines just kind of fading away from your reality. It's like, you know, the train's leaving the station. Eventually, you don't see each other any longer. You don't experience each other any longer and as much as people want to put a date or a deadline on when do we stop seeing each other you won't that won't even cross your mind after a while it won't even cross your heart you're like whatever and you're just in the flow of that higher perspective respecting and honoring everyone's experience no matter where they are no matter what timeline they're experiencing if they, you know, if they're on the impatient waiting game or whatever for, for a moment or an event, so, so it is. It really, it really doesn't matter at this point because the timelines divided back in 2011. You know, we saw it coming. We had that experience. And now it's just, you know, gently, easily phasing out of each other's existence. There's no judgment involved. It's your own choice. Mm -hmm. It's your own choice. But eventually those lower timelines just drop away completely. You know, and Gaia won't uh, support because she's becoming a more solar crystalline, mm. solar, you know, sun yeah. type crystalline sun, spiritual sun. She won't support those lower experiences anymore and they just fade out. You know, it's not, it's the biblical kind of judgment day thing is so, <laughs> it's just fading out of the reality. You're like, this is what we were talking about all these years. You know, yeah, it was like there was a threat back in the day because people needed to wake up. But here it is, you know, several thousand years later and people are still having the same talk, you know, this same discussion on the lower timelines. And you're like, all right, honey, you know, it, it is what it is. But, you know, everyone gets their experience. It's fine. Gosh, everything is so fine when you have that 
that DNA and that heart coherence kicking in um, because your your sacred heart center, which is the beam for source, the Christed state, yeah, becomes such a palpable, real thing. It's just like every other. If you can remember when you first woke up and how bizarre it was that other people were having a completely different experience. <laughs> now take that up to like this embodiment level. And the people at the embodiment level are like, oh my gosh, everything is completely different up here. You know, and it's the same with the with the ascension tribe with the awakened and the ascending and the embodiment people, you know, the embodiment folks who are starting to turn on the Christed state. You know, and and the masters who are already in the Christed state are like, come on up. You know, <laughs> it's like it's beautiful up here. Like, what is the problem? Like, just come up and just do what do what we're doing. You know, and practice and yeah. get into your your mastery practices because you, all of this is going away. You know, mm -hmm. and it's it's incredible to start to have that experience and to have the experience in this kind of weird linear time where it seems like whoa it's all going so slowly and then it starts to amplify and amplify and amplify and you're like oh my gosh you know because the higher frequency you hold the less experience of dense time you have and i absolutely love that we've tied in how um dna and time work in this crystalline dna class mm -hmm. i'm just like oh my gosh this is just i love it I love it because DNA has this, the higher levels of DNA, DNA have this quantum feature where they're like actually time dynamics and DNA are so closely intermingled that um, I, I just love it. It's such a geeky conversation. I just love it. I, I won't get into that today because it's just too it's too complex if you don't have the foundation that's why i'm like taking everybody through the steps in the in the class like let's just go and then we'll accelerate you know into the geekier conversations but it's really fascinating how it's all tied together i'm just getting so many like revelation personal revelations and and intel i'm like do you see do you see how we have these wormholes and the dna when it rebundles and it's the exact same thing you do when you timeline jump i'm like oh my god it's you know it's just really i know i'm just an ascension geek but but um but i love it's so elegant and beautiful the way it's all tied together mm -hmm. but ultimately it is about the choice of experience yeah. you know moment to moment Going well, and and for a lot of people who are experiencing the kind of intensity, like no one uh, who's who's awake and has like some of the crystal and structures turned on, uh, is you know you're having that experience. Like whoa, the energy is really turning me into something else, mm. and our our personal resistance causes so much distortion if you just like try to hold on to what you were what you thought you were going to be and higher self is like come over here and <laughs> uh, you got to pay attention meditate do the yoga walk in nature get outside you know c connect with with people who are having the same experience it does help but there's you know there's a, a lot of uh journaling and sleep and higher vibrational foods and like just the, the maximize you know maximize your support system for that higher level of light mm -hmm. so that it doesn't create dis-ease or discomfort along the way you know it's mm -hmm. all of us want the higher light that's why it's happening because we've all made these higher choices and they always said embodiment was going to change everything mm -hmm. so when you get a few hundred thousand people experiencing embodiment you are suddenly a higher level of the human heart grid and that's pulling everybody up it mm -hmm. always does that you get a few hundred thousand people vibrating at a higher level it's pulling everybody up and it's actually setting off these time locks for gaia to say okay here's your next experience which is connected to the solar experience which is connected to the galactic level it's all interconnected you know so we're unlocking it kind of from the ground up when it comes to agreements of how fast can we go and you hit that 2020 energy that we all agreed to a couple months ago and you can just feel it like wow this is going to be amazing you know yeah absolutely
I really feel like the 12, 12, 12 this year is going to be super powerful as well. And I know that you've got an event on which I would love to attend because it's actually my birthday. <laughs> really? Oh, well, happy incarnate anniversary. It's going to be a whiz bang. Um, yeah, I started receiving that a couple of months ago. They were like, you should get people together, get people together, get people. Because I didn't, you know, the 12, 12 was on my radar, but I didn't realize like, oh, it's a 12 year. We've got mm. literally the yeah. seven year anniversary of Gaia's Ascension on the 12, 12, 12 this year. So mm. I'm just like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and for for those of us who had like that, that amazing experience of, of, at you know literally midnight on the 12 12 12 back in the day of experiencing Gaia going into that realm like I I was it was you know midnight I was on Shasta it was freezing cold and I had all of my clothes on <laughs> I'd set up the sacred circle outside we were told be outside midnight when it comes in like usher this in because it was frequencies that you had to be in that attention mm-hmm. and in that alignment in that moment in order to to have that agreement and uh, so we were like kind of catching these codes that were going to like just fly right by and uh and connecting with Gaia in that moment to support her and it was you know just literally all of my vision just went to new earth it was just like the realms just opened up and I saw her sparkling new earth level and it like you couldn't blink it away or anything it was just, and I had my eyes open it was just like whoosh, all of a sudden she was there and clearly heard Gaia saying welcome you're coming with me yeah. and I was just like oh is this the moment kind of thing but uh, but all day long on the 12 12 12 I was just you know I could barely keep my eyes open like it was just like this psychedelic uh, amazing experience all day long, bringing in these these codes and and assisting this kind of, you know, another kind of separation of worlds. But her fully anchoring that higher platform, and there were all these gateways being established for us later down the timeline to have this experience of ascension. And it was just it was really incredible. So I feel that the thing that was that people were anticipating to happen on the twelve twenty one actually happened on the twelve twelve twelve. And it's it's like anything with the gatekeeping. Gatekeeping, you're always just opening it so that people can have that experience uh, later on. But it was just oh my gosh, goosebumps everywhere. <laughs> just such a, a beautiful experience. But there's there's sacredness to seven. You know, the, all the, all the masters with the sevens all the time, um, just kind of pointing at this twelve twelve coming up. Um, as uh, a, a point of again another kind of crystalline convergence point where we go into the next octave of our experience so yes I'm getting people together in Sedona and it's a very 5d type gathering I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen but we're we're going to be here you know on the ground uh, intentionally anchoring that light in the next level and that opening that that crystalline pathway to the new earth for all concerned wow oh man oh i really want to come <laughs> well i mean you could tap in you know you yeah, can always... no, absolutely if, if i physically can't be there i'm definitely going to tap in yeah because, um yeah. yeah because i was i was given at the beginning of the year that 12 12 12 this year was just going to be huge I was like, okay, okay, but then I didn't get anything else. Then it was just like, and then I saw your event. I was like, oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, and it's one of those things where they're like, get everything done, get everything done. You're like, you know, because like the couple of weeks before have to be really clear. Mm. And then literally after the 12, 12, 12, that's when I, I go into, like I usually have the mid-December to mid-January where I'm, off the radar, yeah. you know, I just like shut everything down because that's when I receive everything for the next year mm-hmm. and really go into my mastery. You know, that's that's my cave time, you know, kind of thing. And uh, so it's interesting that I'm having this gathering right before that because they're like, you're going to be, you know, you're going to have to reset everything to the next level. And I'm very familiar with that reset mm-hmm. phase where it's like, if you don't 
pay attention, like it's, it, it's kind of detrimental to your ascension process. If you're trying to do busyness and business as usual or whatever, they're like, mm -mm. <laughs> in your mastery, step away. And way show that others should be, could be, you know, by choice doing the same thing. You know, when we say pay attention, this is the time for meditation to go within mm -hmm. to assist Gaia in revealing her new earth self. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it, it can't be full of, you know, Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and posting and worrying about this and doing that and everything. They're like, get it all done. You know, send all, send the Christmas presents ahead of time <laughs> so yeah. that you can, so that you can really yeah. come part of that cosmic operation. You know, we are in service, highest level of service. You're always asking highest levels of service. And like when you and I receive, Hey, the 12, 12, 12, you know, this is like back last year, 12, 12, you know, 12, 12, pay attention. You know, it's been on our radar for so long. We're like, all right. This is, you know, this is the highest thing that I can do, the highest thing I can do in service. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and it really is about honoring those times. I mean, I felt like I went into an energetic cave and it literally was that I was basically told to go completely off grid, completely shut down. You know, everything that I thought I was going to be doing. No, nothing. You know, get out into nature. Basically, I just wanted to be away from everybody in a field, in a in a wood, actually, and just you know, without anybody else around me, just to completely be and receive what was sort of supposed to come through, uh, so that I would be ready to then take the action um uh when when i kind of came out of it and and it really literally was that because then i came out of that energy and it, it was literally like a light switch went on and then everything for the summit just went bing 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 and just completely fell into place it was it, it was literally like magic and and i know what you're saying about linear time and, and kind of being able to shift time because it was like time was stretching <laughs> mm -hmm. that you know I could do everything that had to be done it was yeah it was quite an incredible experience but that's all come about through like you say creating the vessel that can actually contain that that light that frequency so that you can maintain that and it's not just that kind of momentary thing when if you have an activation or something um because i know a lot of people do dna activations and and one of the questions that um one of the people had written in before the the session today was you know if if your dna is activated does that stick but you've answered that because no it doesn't if your container isn't able to actually maintain that frequency um, right. I mean, it does, about, it does clear it? people, you know, if you have people in your tribe who are doing DNA activations, you'll, you'll see the reaction from the person, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, everyone's having this individual experience. So if the individual is getting nauseous or feeling spacey, or there's clear, you know, there's always clearing involved with a DNA activation. It's just, if you, if you would, prefer the DNA activation to hold, to be able to hold that in, in the cellular structure, because it, it is a physical thing. Mm. If you want to hold that multidimensional aspect in the physical structure, there has to be, you know, that that bio landscape has to be um, complementary mm. to that. I, I mean, again, it's just like the ascension process. At, at at some point, you know, if you're plowing through the ascension, trying to get activations and and uh, but but not really doing the work, at some point you just hit a wall, mm -hmm. you know. And and everyone's had that, where you're just like, oh, okay, I can't go any further until I deal with, you know, X, Y, and Z, or my behavior, or my lifestyle, or my path, or my service work, or what I'm saying, or what I'm doing. You know, there's so many things that that affect the the dna because the dna is not just a physical thing it's a quantum thing it's a multi-dimensional thing and you're not turning on one strand or the other they all work together so it's a big there's no 12 strand dna activation like that you know it's just 
it they they build on each other but it's it's uh they all interact so if one layer or a strand or whatever is is off or not holding the frequency or the body is just like whoa you know gets ill or whatever then yeah there's clearing but then you have to you know go back and do it again do it again do it again mm -hmm. and to and i think the most you know, one of the most detrimental things that had occurred in like the light worker community over the last 20 years was this idea of somebody else activating your dna mm -hmm. you know it was just like oh, it, it, it's your it's your dna you know take responsibility for it just like the ascension process or or people claiming like i will you know grant you ascension no such thing you know and that's all part of the awakening process no judgment but it's you know, uh, an activation does, you know, outside activations can assist, but ultimately it's you. It's, it's much more empowering if you learn the, you know, what's going on and how to fully support that so that you can be, again, it's the heart intention. Yeah. If, if you really want to become a, a son of God, a crystalline being, a Christ itself, whatever you want to call it, if you really want to ascend your consciousness and start experiencing life from the higher self, higher perspective point of view, then it's it's your own empowered heart, you know, because it, it's all heart function. You know, none of that DNA stuff, you know, it's fine, but you can do a DNA active activation on somebody who's really distorted and they might get ill for a couple of days, but it's not going to have a permanent effect at all, you know, because it's the person's heart and choices that are creating the experience through the DNA. Yeah, yeah. Just got a few comments in the, the webinar chat. Um Caroline says, such clarity. Um, I honor you. Thank you for your journey. Mm -hmm. uh, I love being here in your resonance. Your words feel like a breath. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then um, she's put tears, tears of connection when you said Gaia. Um, and she she lowered her hand because she had previously had a hand raised because the, you were actually answering the questions that she had wanted to ask. Uh, and she says she's been seeing 777s seven, seven, a lot. And so is Melanie. She's been seeing uh, a lot as well. So. Yeah, it's coming up. Yeah, it's definitely. in our field for sure. Yeah. Um, Malin is saying it's really interesting, um, but can you speak more about the food? Because she's craving a lot of sweet things at the minute and she's really not a sweet tooth. So is that part of um, the, the work that she's doing, um, the, her ascension journey? I well, mean, sometimes food, uh, it is an important aspect. Yeah, just because, and I feel because of the light level too, the light level as these photonic plasma influxes come, they, if you're already on the ascension path and you're, you know, clearing out the lower levels and getting aligned and starting to feel that higher vibration in your energy fields and in your cells, then sometimes the cells will, <clears throat> will trigger the mind because they're interconnected uh like hey we need more calories <laughs> like we're shaking a little bit you know harder or whatever um i would and and automatically just because you don't want any kind of parasitic activity or low vibe um it, you know sh sugars and wheat and dairy and things like that are really detrimental to the crystalline structure and they're they're so like a weaponized especially if you're in the us but um but if you're getting like sweet tooth cravings, go for the high vibe sugars, you know, dates and raw honey and things like that. I have a jar of Manuka honey in my fridge and because it's so expensive, I don't eat that much of it. So that's how I keep my sweet tooth under control, like $20 jar of honey. Okay, let's just have half a teaspoon, you know, because if I had like a regular raw, raw honey, I'd just be like, yay, you know. Um, but yeah, some sometimes uh, it's it's the reaction of, of the body like, whoa, we're burning a lot more energy here. Um, but But you can balance that by more physical activity. I've, I've found that too, like, wow, the body just wants to burn off this higher frequency. So for me, it's, I, I got to get to the gym or do a run in the morning because it's just like, 
wow, there's a lot more energy here to work with. And I want my cellular structure to create something new. So I don't want to go into kind of, um, because it's such a mental level, emotional level thing, like, oh, I just, uh, it, it's, it, you got to kind of separate, is it comfort or do you actually need more calories? Yeah. You know, that that's the first thing. Like, is the body just getting scared and going into like looping behavior of, oh, I'm just going to like, you know, good, try to step down the light level by insulating myself with like a low vibe food or whatever. And and kind of go, okay, body, let's, let's do a test, you know, have, have some dates or have some honey or, or, uh, you know, maple sugar, uh, maple syrup, you know, the kind of natural organic stuff that supports the crystalline structure and start there and see, oh, okay, I just need more calories or is it, do I need a behavioral change? Mm. Is it emotional? Mm. Is it my, my brain is, you know, because the brain and the heart uh, get synchronized with you know with our with our support. So is it the brain needs to be reprogrammed at this point, rewired? Like, hey, the old impulse that's coming from from the from the guts, from the intestines. You know, there's so much out there now about the the link between the gut and the mind, and and what's going on here and the heart. That uh, you want to make sure as you're as your organs are getting rewritten into crystalline, that they're not just sending signals to the brain that the brain is then interpreting as like, I'm hungry, I need more food or whatever. It's like, wait, is that the old pattern? And now I need to rewire into mm -hmm. new thoughts and new behaviors. So we play with it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, if, if I start feeling um, like cravings for, for, crap you know for for junk or whatever it's like well, wait a second we're not doing that anymore what does my body actually need is it an emotional reaction i take a walk you know i go into physical activity i actually don't give my body um you know those kind of impulsive things i'm like wait a second what's really going on here mm -hmm. you know take a walk have a workout go for a swim whatever you have available to you and go, all right, body, we're just going to back off of this for a minute. Let me go into uh, a, a little bit of a, you know, a few hours fast or an intermittent fast or a day of just water. Like, is the body actually asking for a reset mentally, emotionally, physically, mm -hmm. spiritually? Like, what's really going on here? Because I know a craving for something that's from the old timeline <laughs> is probably telling me it's shedding something. It's shedding subconscious patterns. It's shedding old timelines. So that's my highest advice is like pay attention to what's actually going on because there's a, you know, maybe you're trying to break a looping mechanism, you know, and the, the loops are based on timelines, you know, the lower Lower level timelines don't go anywhere. It's the same, more the same, more the same, more the same. And if you're breaking the pattern and you're attempting to use those crystalline pathways to the higher timelines and the body's like, oh, you know, well, oh, stay down here because the body's been so trained. Mm. I need to be safe. I need to be safe. I need to be safe. But it doesn't know the difference. Mm. You know, so start your day with visualizing going into that higher state of consciousness and feeling what it's like to be in that higher vibration. And then you start to reprogram the brain because the brain can't tell the difference between real or imagined experience. It's just, you know, a reflection of what's going on in these realities. So if you train your brain to feel that higher trajectory, it'll start dropping the lower timelines. And then when stuff like that presents, you're like, mm -mm -mm, we're not going there. We're going up here. Yeah. You know, and you consciously, redirect the thoughts and if it is if it turns out to be yeah i just need like a higher quality of uh of calorie or you know the sweet tooth thing or whatever it's like give it something high vibrational mm -hmm. and then see what happens yeah. you know it's like don't just go into uh unconscious subconscious behavior like really bring it up you know all of us getting fine-tuned as we go through this so it's literally moment to moment wait a second, what's really going on here? Wait a second, what's happening? Coming back into the heart, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, commanding that heart coherence, like what am I really feeling? What am I really needing? What's really going on here? 
you know, and that's, that's our mastery is taking it moment to moment. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. And Melanie says, yeah, that makes so much sense. Um, she's a vegan diet, but she's been taking honey just recently. Oops. Um, so thank you. And Dawn says such fantastic guidance and very relevant, uh, relevant for her right now as well. Um, I'm just re looking at the time um, and we're, we've been on for about 50, 55 minutes now. So I'm just going to invite if anybody has a question that they want to ask Sandra, if they want to actually come on and, and ask Sandra a question. If you just want to oh. raise your hand, you do that by clicking on the participant button and then there's an option to raise your hand. So feel free to do that. Um, and if nobody has a question, then I will just ask. Doesn't look like any. I think we've answered quite a few of the questions as we've been going along, actually. So it doesn't look like anybody's got a question that they want to ask live. So I'm offering you the floor, Sandra. Is there anything that wants to come through that you haven't covered yet? Um, that is really feeling relevant for this conversation just before we kind of finish off or um, or do you feel that we've we've covered everything that, that well I know I mean it's such a huge subject <laughs> we could probably talk for hours on crystalline DNA but yeah. is there anything that really wants to be shared before we close this conversation yeah well we realize too that we're we're in an acceleration and an amplification of the ascension experience. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who are starting to hit embodiment where you feel and you have commanded because it doesn't happen automatically, all this stuff is based on intention and your conscious participation. So if you're hitting that level of your ascension where you are desiring that embodiment, and again, embodiment, if you really wanna be in service, that is the thing right now as we go into these 1212 and the 2020 timelines and all this accelerated experience, it's really, uh, again, the reminder for that moment to moment heart choice of what is my journey showing me? Because it does have different layers and different phases to it. So when you go through uh, healing phases, like the healing phase, doesn't end for you know several phases of our of our ascension process you know healing is consistent because you're peeling off and deconstructing old beliefs and old paradigm structures within your own energy fields and because dna is a quantum record of everything that you have been on this planet and will be on this planet and and it's getting triggered to do something else through your conscious participation. And these frequencies are really kind of aimed at DNA activation. So they're opening up new possibilities for your higher timelines, your higher experiences, at the same time that they're deconstructing codes that we're creating, you know, genetic codes, those lines of codes that, uh, that we're creating your old self, your lower self. So that that stuff starts, you know, it's like you're building epigenetically, you know, epigenetic beyond the, the gene code. Mm -hmm. Epigenetically, you're building on a, a new experience and the old one is phasing out. You know, you don't turn off uh, sections of, of your genetic code. You don't turn off the physical. What, what you're doing is we're, we're building on it so that we have a physical experience of transformation. So yes, we go light body, but it's actually this, it, and it's never been done before, which is really the most incredible part of this whole thing is that this kind of ascension, going from a carbon to a carbon silica structure to a silica structure, right through the physical and a conscious experience rather than you know, slam, solar flash, everything's gone, and now this new thing happens. Like, it's never been done before where we have this experience of transformation and the physical and new DNA and all this stuff. Uh, remind yourself it's never been done before, but also remind yourself it's the experience, your experience that is the, uh, that is the oversoul intention. You know, oversoul's having this experience right through 
the body of ascension. So take it moment to moment and really kind of examine all of us examining, wow, this is a whole different experience. Like, what do I need to let go of? There's so much shedding going on, especially this year, because 2020 energies, again, again, a vastly different experience. And I think about like who I am now and who I was in January of this year. I can't even remember, you know, and DNA is connected to time dynamics. That's why we lose our memory. You're like, I don't know. Who was I 10 years? I have no idea. You know, it's so moment to moment, which is beautiful because then you're getting aligned with zero point. But you can you could see the reflection in your own DNA that used to create a linear experience becoming less linear. Mm-hmm. I mean, if that's any any like litmus test for where you are in your journey or 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 you know how much of your DNA is is good getting overwritten by the higher dimensional DNA. Uh, uh, how, what's your what's your memory field like? You know, memory creates the experience of time. So if when you feel time dynamics changing and all of a sudden you can't remember what did I do yesterday and there's no mental, physical, emotional, you know, not, nothing that's creating that in the physical outside of your ascension process, if you have no other excuse, then you're you're there you're starting to experience that where it's just like wow i'm really just losing and it's not losing the memory so much as losing the emotional charge mm. it's what's cre- what creates time actually what creates our experience of time is the gravity of our emotional charge on the past keeping mm. that going you wake up and you still believe things are the same you're the same person because of you know, stacking all of your lifetimes or whatever, if you still believe that, then yeah, you're having a lower experience. But when you start having the higher experience and engaging with that and surrendering to it, the old experiences don't have, through your emotional clearing, don't have the emotional charge. So it changes the dynamic of that memory. And now you're not attached to it. So you're actually turning off the charge on the linear experience. So now you start to go into flow of the higher 5D realm where it's more flowy, nothing sticks. You can't really, you can remember, you know, you look at your calendar. Oh yeah, I had sessions yesterday or, oh yeah, there were unity meditations yesterday, but there's no charge there. It's like, whatever. Mm. And, and then you start applying it to your life Mm. and your service work and everything else. Like everything comes from love. There's no more drama connected because your emotions are clear nothing sticks you know gaia told us that she's like new round new earth realms that we have created nothing sticks create uncreate flow constant flow and she loves it up there because all this denser memory stuff of the old old earth dynamics Mm. were so like set in stone gosh i had this beautiful quote from like 99 Um, that came through one of the messages talking about how the stars are just waiting for us to stop carving stuff in stone, you know, (laughs) and just like break it apart and come back. And then you're back to your star self, you know, kind of thing that new earth is like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you can keep that in heart and like, let go, let go, let go, Mm -hmm. especially with the personal stories of, you know, I'm from here and I'm from there, even the light worker community, you know, I'm Syrian, therefore, you know, none of this matters. It's like, <laughs> let go, let go, so that you can have something else. Yeah. You can have the new experience and the new earth now, now, and visualize it and feel it regularly what does it feel like to be completely free of the old dynamics what does it feel like to be a new earth what does it feel like when all the problems are gone everything's resolved we're all living in unity and peace and harmony what do your days feel like what are your what are your what is your life what does your body feel like feel and visualize that often because it affects the fields of your dna to create that mm very powerful when we do it all together, like on the Sunday unity meditations, which I should mention, we've been doing them for three and a half years, any Sunday, every single Sunday, four times, four different time periods, just so we can connect and, 
and send that energy into the fields at the same time. Join it. It's only 33 minutes of meditation. Join in and you have that new earth now intention in heart of just peace, unity, harmony, ascension. And you just stay there for 30 minutes and you infuse that into the collective realities right through the heart. There's no other intention but peace. No other intention but unity and love in that moment. That's all you have to do. You don't have to fix anything or try to activate anything. You just let the higher self take over. And when we all do that collectively, it changes things. We're watching it change our experience. We start to see each other. We get telepathically connected and connected through the heart, just start to feel everybody. Moments before the unity meditations, all of a sudden, whoop, oh, there is everybody. Okay, great. It's great because you get to experience new earth in the now. Absolutely. And it is really, really powerful. I, I would highly recommend. I mean, obviously, if you sign up for Sandra's newsletter, you will get information about the Unity Meditations. Mm -hmm. um, they're available regardless of what time zone you happen to be in. I'm sure you'll find one to suit you. And it is such an amazing experience just to be in that space. Um, just connected, really connected. And it is so powerful, so powerful to be connected globally with all of the other people connecting um at that exact time um and like you say it's just half an hour half an hour and you know you don't have to do all four you could just you know pick one that that suits your time zone and and just tune in it's, it's a wonderful experience but um i think we we're going to bring this conversation to a close because it's 10 past eight now <clears throat> and i've got to get it uploaded <laughs> 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 so I think I'm going to have a late night ahead of me. Um, but I'll just uh, give some feedback. Um, Benjamin says, this is awesome. Beautiful soul and amazing guidance. Thank you. Um, uh, Melanie says, it's been thoroughly enchanting. Thank you so much. Um, and Dawn says, the light is flooding in. Very beautiful. So thank you so much, Sandra, for coming on and sharing your wisdom and your knowledge and just your beautiful soul energy and light. It's been absolutely amazing having you on the show and I've enjoyed every second of it. And I'm, well, I know that the audience has too. And whether you're watching this on live or whether you're catching it in the replay, if you have any feedback that you want to share, please um, either post it to me via my email address or post it on the Facebook group and I will pass all the feedback on to Sandra because I think that's that's one of the the things that I feel that I can do uh, is to kind of allow the speakers to uh, know the impact that they've had through sharing their energy with us and the community so thank you so much Sandra um, and I, I'm going to be looking at your uh, crystalline DNA mastery course is that I know that's running at the minute but is there going to be like a replay um, element of the course available on your website oh yeah yeah it's just the the first folks through the class I mean it's available 24 7 they're all it's videos and audios and everything it's not like a webinar type setup they're all professional videos but the first folks through the class get live Q&A's with me in October and November yeah. so that's the benefit and and uh yeah but it's a you get access for a whole year to work with the materials. So anytime, you can join us anytime. And, and if you're just, you know, starting on your awakening journey, I would definitely recommend checking out um, Sandra's courses on um, the foundation of Ascension. It's absolutely jam packed full of wonderful information to help you with all the clearing and everything and detoxing and, and just creating that vessel to um, enable this crystalline DNA activation within yourself so that you can actually go through the embodiment process. Because for me, that is what this is all about. You know, it is about us embodying our highest aspect of self within this physical form and creating new earth within this physical plane. And it's about how we actually interact and, and consciously go about our daily incarnated lives. So I will leave it there. We have a break tomorrow. Um, there isn't an interview tomorrow because of somebody's scheduling. Uh, it didn't quite work out. But we have another live interview on Wednesday with Ariella Indigo. So I'm looking forward to that and uh, setting the intention there'll be no internet issues then. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Sandra. Um, unfortunately, the only way I can end the meeting is by ending it and it shuts it off for everybody. But thank you and so many blessings to you. You're such a beautiful soul. Thank you. Oh, blessings, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Have a great evening or rest of your day, whatever time zone you're in. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.